Well, I'm at Mike Haley Seven's house, and we're going to do the next TDD report at his house, talking about technology and teaching. So, this is the TDD report for June 28, 2014. Now, how this got started was I talked to Mike about the fact that my sister was the head of IT at a college that had a bunch of satellite colleges besides, I think, about like six or seven besides the main college. And she showed me a new classroom. This was quite a few years ago. And they had places for the students to sit, but they also had these little consoles, and they were kind of strange looking. They were little television sets or monitors with a webcam on top, and these represented a student that was off-site on their computer, and it had a little flag deal on the right. And she told me when the student wanted to ask a question of the teacher in class via their computer, that little flag would just pop up, and they would ask questions that way. So it was a kind of a new tech classroom. But uh, I talked to Mike about it and uh, some of the differences just in the last 10 years of teaching. Plus, I'd like him to talk about, first I want him to begin talking about this uh, library where you go to check out a book. And then I'd like to have him talk about um, what happened 10 years ago in the classroom that he would, uh, like things he would never use today 10 years later in the classroom. All right, so that library thing for NC State? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I haven't been there myself, but my friend went. And uh, there's a library over at North Carolina State University, their new library. All the walls inside are made out of glass that you can write on. Uh, many of them are also TV screens, huge TV screens. Uh, then if you want to borrow a book, uh, the way you do it is you go to this computer console, and you push them, you find what you want, you make an order, and this robot arm goes into this vast area that nobody goes in and gets the book for you like a factory and brings it and deposits it, deposits it in a bin for you. So you never actually have to go search in the stacks. Nobody does. And then when you go to put it back, you just put it in the bin, and the robot takes it back and puts it in its spot. It's amazing. I mean, the technology they have now. And a lot of the books they've already scanned, so you don't even need to have the physical book. You can just look at it from your iPad, your phone, whatever. Mm -hmm. If you want to actually hold on to the book, you can do it. So that's over at NC State. I don't teach there, unfortunately, but, man, that's going to be nice when it comes to our school. So, um... Ten years ago, is that what you want? Ten years, yeah. What, what stuff did you use ten years ago teaching that you just wouldn't have in your classroom or wouldn't have a use for anymore? Let's see. Uh, uh, handouts. Yeah, I don't use any handouts anymore. I've completely gone to digital. About ten years ago, I would go to the class. I'd have a stack of books. I'd have a bunch of handouts that I photocopied, and each handout was maybe three, four pages, and that had to be photocopied 24 times. So that was a lot of paper and a lot of time and effort. And so eventually I learned how to scan things, save them as PDFs, upload them to Blackboard. That's the, the shell that we use. Some people use Moodle, but at my school most of us use Blackboard. And the students are able to access any document that I have scanned up there. Uh, I encourage them to download them so that they can study them on their own. I make videos using Camtasia, which I never could do before 10 years ago. Uh, where I show them how to do things like how to do MLA format, how to uh, write a summary, pretty much anything I want them to do, including how to register for classes. Everything's online now. As you might remember, in the old days, you oh, had to go... standing in those long lines. Sometimes you'd have to come back the second day. Yep. Yep. I used to camp out at <coughs> 6 o'clock in the morning with a lounge chair and, and wait. So you'd be the first one in line. Not anymore. Now you just go online and you can find any class you want. It's amazing. So that's the, the digitization of my documents is one thing. The other one is, this is revolutionary. Mm -hmm. I had this student, and he taught me how to use this thing called Track Changes in Microsoft Word. I didn't know how to use that, so I figured it out with him. And now whenever a student does a paper, they submit it to me through Blackboard. I download it onto my computer screen in Microsoft Word. I call the student to the front of the class, and while the other students are working on their next paper, I'm correcting with them the last paper. Sometimes I show it on the screen so that other students can benefit from the corrections if the student wants to. Other, otherwise, it's just me and the student working at my podium and nobody else can see. And that way I'm able to go through every paper with every student and say to them, what do you think you need here? And then, oh, yeah, I need a comma. Right, right. What about here? Should you put a capital letter for that? Well, no, I don't know why. Well, I'll tell them why. Because if you correct things and you just, you know, mark, 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 they go, oh, my paper's bleeding, and that's pretty much it. But when you actually have them with you, you can correct, correct, correct. And at the end, because I put the track changes on there, now when they open the document again, they can see every change that I made uh, in red, green, or blue, depending on what I do. 
and they can ask me questions later on like, yeah, you put, it was in before, now you changed it to at, why did you do that? And I talk about prepositions. So then I uh, save it, send it back to them, give them a grade on Blackboard, and I've never printed any paper at all. Wow. It's absolutely amazing. Not like the old days where you'd have a stack of homework and all the tip. The, all the papers that were written out by hand and take them home and grade oh, or type or whatever. If you look at my older videos, I have a video of me at a bar correcting papers many a time, yeah. and the more I drank, the better the grades got, so <laughs> that, that doesn't really benefit them. But um, uh, I had a student in class a couple of semesters ago, and he had an iPad, and I said, where's your book? And he says, right here. Hmm. So I looked at it, it was the grammar book on the iPad. And I said, really? How much did that cost? He said, oh, pirate download, it was free. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah. But he had the entire textbook mm. scanned in on, on his iPad. Mm. Somebody had scanned it. And pretty much uh, all the books are going that way. Now mm. you can rent them in digital form. Rent them. Mm. And at the end of the semester, it deletes itself. Apparently mm. it's got a self-destruct thing or whatever. Mm. Uh, so the students don't have physical books anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't correct physical papers anymore. Nobody uses the printer hardly at all anymore because you don't need to. Um, there was another thing I was going to mention about uh, the, the way things are changing in the future. Oh, uh, the work at your own pace thing. Mm -hmm. Before, uh, students would take several semesters to finish certain things. Now they have these things called modules where you can finish chapters in a, in a, in a series within the same semester depending on how fast you work. So I incorporated the idea into my class. In the last three or four assignments, I tell my students, if you finish your PowerPoint presentation in front of the class, your, fi your, your last essay, the final exam, which is on Blackboard, uh, they get two weeks to take it. They can take it twice. Uh, I randomize the questions, and I randomize the lettering. So it's harder to cheat. Uh, if I said, if you can finish these three assignments, and you get good grades on them, then you don't have to come anymore. And I get people who finish three weeks early sometimes. So, that, like you were saying, with the 80-20 thing, 80% mm -hmm. of the students uh, are going to maybe uh, complete it early, and then that 20% that really needs me, mm -hmm. I can help them. So, the, 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 the really ambitious ones, the ones I, I call them the smart ones, mm -hmm. they are done early. And then the dumb ones, I can help, and they ask mm -hmm. me all kinds of questions, so I can focus my energy on them, and it's really helped. Yeah. No more end-of-semester parties with the cake, though. That kind of oh. sad. No more gifts. Any idea about what you think in 10 years from now it's even going to be like, too, as far as... Uh, oh, goodness. 10 years from now? I think they're going to cut more staff and teachers, and it's going to be more robotic teaching and stuff. Yeah. I think it'll be... You'll record uh, videos. Mm -hmm. The workload, of course, is going to get more. Yeah, because uh, then you'll have 50, 60, 70 students to look out at a yeah. time. And if you're teaching an online class, you already have mm -hmm. two or 300 students sometimes these teachers oh, have. Okay. It's amazing. Uh, but a lot of it is all kind of self-guided, self-directed, and the teacher becomes an assistant. Mm -hmm. And if the student has a question, then you just answer the question. But everything else, they have, it's uh, self-motivated, uh, self-generated. Everything you just do online. You don't even have to come to class anymore in a lot of cases. So I think eventually, here's the part that scares me. What if I make all these videos mm -hmm. about my teaching and my notes and all this stuff? That's property of my school. Mm -hmm. Not just my school, any, any yeah. school. If you're an employee, yeah. And what if they just said, you know what, we don't need you anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, bye-bye. And next thing you know, they have all my stuff. And my yeah. virtual self is now teaching my classes. I've That's heard the thing about American engineers actually training an engineer from India or another country to take over their job at one-third the price. And they realize as they're teaching all this stuff, it's just to eliminate their job, so it's kind of scary. Oh, yeah, it is scary. Now, see, one thing for me, I'm lucky, as an English as a foreign language teacher, or English as a second language. Uh, it's hard to robotically replace. Yeah, because yeah. there's so many needs. Every language has a different need, and mm -hmm. cultures, and all. there's so many things you have to negotiate. So, Whereas a science, history, or a math teacher, they might be replaced in the next 10 years easily. Yep. yep. But here's the, here's the $120,000 question, and with... Uh, two grandchildren in college right now. Mm -hmm. No lowering of the tradition, it doesn't seem. that You know, they never, they, it, it gets easier and easier, less teachers, more, all mechanized, more computerized, yep. which brings the cost way down, but the tuitions never seem to drop. No, I mean, they don't. You're talking about some of these colleges now where the kids are going, and this, I'm not talking about doctor's degree or anything, I'm just talking about a regular bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. 30000 a year. Oh yeah, it's ridiculous. I call it a hype. I hate yeah. to say it. In the old days, they had apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. Now you have to go to college all these years just mm -hmm. so you can get the same job that you used to be able to get out of high school. But the, the, the sophistication... $120,000 in student loans, you're going to take oh, a yeah. long time to pay that back. And it's not really more sophisticated than it used mm -hmm. to be. I mean, a lot of the things that you have to learn on the job, they don't teach you in college. 
luckily for me, I, I can say everything that I've learned in college I've actually had to use, which yeah. is great, except for algebra. Well, plus for your students, too. I mean, it really enhances them. I mean, being able to speak English and write English fluently. Yep. Now, is there is one good thing about college. I will say this. I'm kind of going off topic. I apologize. The first two years of any college in the United States is unusual mm -hmm. for foreigners because they don't understand our system. Mm -hmm. The first two years, I call it the buffet. Mm -hmm. They have to take a couple semesters of English, philosophy, psychology, sociology, oh, history, biology. Stuff. I have to take anthropology. I don't yeah. Don't want to do an anthropology. And at the time, you think, what the hell is this for? <laughs> but then... You, you experience something that might spark something with you. And you say, ooh, you know what, I want to focus on that now. Mm -hmm. You might enter college as a freshman saying, I want to be an astronaut. And at the end of four, you know, two years, you say, you know what, no, I want to be a biochemist because of the classes that you had. And one of the things that really sparked an interest for me was philosophy. Mm -hmm. I had that as, as one of the classes I just took as an elective, and it really changed a lot. Not only that, but it makes you, uh, God, it looks big here, um, it, it helps you to be a more well-rounded person, because mm -hmm. you, the university, think about universities, the, the word universe is in there for a reason, mm -hmm. they want you to know about the universe, about everything around you, mm -hmm. so I like that, that aspect, it's not just focus on the job, get the job, it's actually, you're a human being, you should know what's happened, and what's happening now, so that's a good thing, but here's the thing. I can tell you, within the next hundred years, mm -hmm. with biomechanics uh, and putting technology in people, they're going to be able to put a chip in your head, and you will go in with, with reg you know, just regular person, and you'll come out like Einstein, yeah. because you'll have every piece of information that's ever been made accessible through your brain. And no we're memorizing years. dates and times in American history and world history and Greek culture, and yep. it's like it's all already... You'll yeah. be able to speak any language... I mean, it'll be absolutely amazing. Yeah. And half, of, teachers, half of my memory is Google now. I mean, yeah, and why, even why right now we're doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, why do I need to remember it? I can go on Google. Exactly right. So I think the teacher's job is slowly being phased out, mm. which in a way is a good thing. Yeah. But in a way, like you said, it's a bad thing because you still have to pay all this money for it. Yeah. But I think uh, eventually it'll become irrelevant. I'm hoping some entrepreneur will just put the software together and the artificial knowledge together and make an inexpensive course to where a student could pay $10,000 for a four-year degree but still get all the technology because if yes. he can do it with, say, half a million students yep. at a time because what's the limit? Once you've got it on a server, the server doesn't care as long as you get the bandwidth. Yeah. You can have 50 students, 50,000, 50 million students, yep. and yep. what does it matter? And yeah. just spread it out and charge them 10000 a piece. And as That's long as if they can pass the skills test, why wouldn't you accredit a university like that the same mm -hmm. if your students can perform the same yep. as a $120,000 college? You know, in a way, though, it's good and it's bad. It's, mm -hmm. it's bad because if people will obviously they'll lose their jobs, mm -hmm. but it's good because, you, like you said, it's going to be cheaper. Here's something cool, too, that they're coming up with. Because of the modules, mm -hmm. eventually they're going to spread that module idea to everything. You'll be able to get a four-year college degree within two years, mm -hmm. two and a half, maybe even one, depending on how quickly you work on the computer. My son did it in three years because he never took something out. Yep. So you won't have you just sit on a computer in a huge lab, and then anytime you have a question, they'll have a math specialist, a biology specialist, an English specialist, yeah. can answer your question or keep going. Like I was saying, you would have a college with a skeleton staff of maybe eight teachers and a few staff yep. just to handle stuff, and that's all you need for the whole college. God, there'll be flight attendants of schools. <laughs> oh goodness. So yes. anyway, if you want to get a chance to tell us all your thoughts and leave the comments and everything, so uh, yeah, thank you, Mike, for. Uh, Joining for the TDD report. I think that's the first one you've been on as a I've, guest, has This it? is my very first TDD okay. report that I've been on. So thank you. Take care, everybody, and I will try. Like I said, I'm on the road, so next week I may be able to get a TDD report out, and maybe not. So take care, everybody. That was great.